Hi, I'm Greg Miller, an Associate Principal Flutist with the Minnesota Orchestra, and these are five tactics to level up your practice game. Some of what I have to say is specific to woodwinds, but really anyone can benefit from these tactics. When you study how accomplished people have achieved their goals, you learn that it is those small but smart things that they can make happen now that over the long term lead to success. With that in mind, as I go through these tactics, take a moment to pause the video and write down one thing you can do now to make that tactic happen. Number one, make over your practice area. A good practice area is in a comfortable, quiet space with good lighting, without too much reverberation or too dry of a sound. Here are the materials you always want to have on hand in your practice area. A metronome and a tuner, pencils and erasers, post-it notes and post-it flags for marking areas in your music, a notebook, a mirror, and a recording device. You may also want to have earplugs and other accessories for your instrument. Remove distractions. You want to have a dedicated space where you won't be interrupted and won't be distracted so you can focus on your work. Interruptions and distractions will hinder your creativity and slow down the speed of your progress. It's best not to use your bedroom or common areas in your house as these are full of distractions. However, sometimes there isn't an alternative. If you must use a common area, work out a schedule with your family so that they can be out of the area and you can focus on your work. If you use your bedroom, create a dedicated area where you can keep your instrument and materials so you can focus. Many say don't have your phone around, but nowadays there are many useful apps that can help you practice. If you do use these apps, put your phone in airplane mode so you won't be distracted by incoming texts, emails, or calls. Turn off or close your computer or laptop. However, if you are using it to listen to a recording, just have one tab open to the recording you're listening to and close and minimize all other windows. Number two, make a plan daily. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Know exactly how much time you're going to spend practicing and what you intend to accomplish by the end of your session. Make a to-do list before you start and specify exactly how much time you're going to spend on each item on your list. Your to-do list is not the same as making goals. Goals are those long-term projects and targets that help keep you motivated, such as learn a piece of music for a recital, memorize all major and minor scales, or audition successfully with youth orchestra. Goals are important and should be written down as well, both short-term and long-term. To-do lists, on the other hand, contain the simple tasks you can finish today to help you progress toward your goals. You can see that this list has very clear and tangible tasks that can be completed and checked off. Don't feel like you have to get all the items on your list checked off in one session. I often find that coming back to something later in the day when I'm fresh makes it a lot easier than it was before. Use a timer if necessary to keep you on schedule and move on to the next task on your list when your timer goes off. Your plan is a living document that will evolve and change over time as your goals change and as you better understand how long it takes to accomplish your goals. Number three, Get inspired by listening. It's great to go into a practice session with a feeling of joy and a feeling of inspiration. Listen to music that moves you, that you find truth and beauty in, and listen to musicians on any instrument as well as singers who you think sound amazing. Strive to incorporate the elements from their music making into yours that you like, whether that is a beautiful vibrato, a deep or mysterious tone color, naturally good intonation, a driving rhythmic sense, or the overall mood and expression. Watch or listen to a recording of that artist three to five times. Try to really figure out exactly what that artist did to create magic in their music making. Doing this will turn you from a passive listener into a critical listener, something that is crucial to becoming a better player. Number four, develop a warm-up that works. Respect for a regular routine will lead to consistent results. A warm-up is a subset of your practice plan that will set you up for long-term success. Like your practice plan, it is a living thing that will evolve and change over time to suit your needs. Ask your teacher for help in coming up with ideas for a warm-up that works for you. A good warm-up will contain the following elements. Setting up a good posture and tension-free plane. Taking full, relaxed breaths that enable you to find your most beautiful tone and extend that tone through the range of the instrument through a combination of steps and wider intervals. Keeping that good tone consistent when articulating and spending some time on different
types, and speeds of articulation. Addressing the common problematic intonation areas of your instrument. Common scale and arpeggio patterns that you practice with a purpose. Focus on those keys you will find in the music you are currently working on, as well as one or two keys you are less familiar with. Attach a task that can be checked off when practicing scales, such as play it one metronome click faster than yesterday, or practice with crescendo and decrescendo. A good warm-up will also address one or two things you find particularly challenging on your instrument. Number five, practice mindfully and record yourself. Isolate and practice the areas in the music you aren't very good at first by playing them slowly and playing them in patterns. Don't simply start at the beginning of the music and run through it mindlessly. When running through your music, keep going when you make a mistake so that you learn to recover from your errors. Later, you can go back and work on the spot that gave you trouble. Use strategic methods for tackling difficult passages. Understand that it can take time to build yourself up to success. Build these strategic methods into your practice plan. Check in with yourself every so often to make sure that your posture, hand position, embouchure, breathing, and other physical elements are in good shape and free of any unnecessary tension while you're practicing. Most importantly, record all or part of your practice session and spend some time listening back. This is also part of becoming that critical listener and will be a real game changer in accelerating your results. The most important thing of all is to have fun. Practicing may not always be a process of joy, but the end goal is to feel good and sound great. Happy practicing.